Well, Nikkei, his wife's band Lucifer or whatever, and he goes, this is before LG passed, but he's like, LG sucks as a human being, but the only entombed is with him. That's what he said. That was like three years ago, whatever. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I'll be honest with you, not to be that complete ultra cabal guy, even clandestine, I didn't like it at first. I'm like, the vocals blow. Yep. I was like, uh, I was like, left hand pass, all you need. I mean, but I do like clandestine. Again, going back to it, it's good. Left hand pass, still bad. When people are like, yeah, the best albums ever is clandestine. I look at you like you're fucking dressing Barbie dolls. But I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, and what about Wolverine Blues? Oh, dude, other than other than no, out of hand, other than it? other than the song Out of Hand, which is fantastic. I think that's the gayest shit I've ever heard. I mean, <laughs> listen to my goddamn Scott and I, Don and the Dead interview. Yeah, like Don says, because. Uh, Scott and I, he likes, well, I got another hot take for you. I even like Wolverine Blues. And then Donna Dad's like, dude, what, is there a topic that's any fucking gayer for death metal that would not be acceptable for a death metal album? And Scott's like, oh, I guess there would be, uh, you know, exceptions. He's like, and I would think Wolverine has got to be one of them. <laughs> He's like, what's next? Next Sinai going to be fucking about Superman? I was like, I kind I mean, of agree with I him. I mean, but... I mean, they were talking about mis misanthropic stuff. No, I know, yeah, but still, okay. the album has literally got Wolverine surfing on a surfboard, basically, with and called Wolverine Blues. It's kind of like, and don't be wrong, you're coming from an X Men super fan as a they, kid. I was dude, like, but I don't they, want that in my death metal. They, I don't want the next Cannibal Course to be goddamn Gambit on the front. They were, they were so bummed about that. Yeah. That was part of uh, working with Sony, like Wolverine, Wolverine. Uh, hey, I know a guy at Marvel. We'll get an unreleased Wolverine comic book. <laughs> stick it in the thing. We'll sell it at comic book shops. We'll sell out of record shops, we'll get the crossover. Or, and But to be fair, this is before Wolverine was like the big million Especially dollar. Especially the movies. Yeah. 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 There's way, yeah. I mean, you're a comic book guy. It was way before the movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. But the band were like, dude, it's nothing to do with, we, we know it's nothing to do with, but that's the that's corporate game. That's the major label game. Yeah, play, yeah, yeah. You know? So fucked them. Yeah. Yeah. But no, like I said, the song Out of Hand, I have the 12-inch maxi. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I actually, to, to their defense on that album, I never actually fully went back and listened to it. But I remember hearing, I was like, I don't like it. I was like, that was the only song I liked. Right. And that's why I bought the Maxi 12 inch. But that's that, it's that death metal meets. Uh, it's like uh, a DB rock and yeah, roll. Yeah, rock yeah, and roll, yeah. yeah. It's a death and roll. Kind of like, yeah. you know, hard work and shit like that. I mean, yep. it was kind of like yep. a tomb and carcass that really were at the forefront of that death and roll but shit. Don't you think, hey, like, isn't there a record that you guys did that was death and roll, Midnight or something? <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe? Yeah. Well, first of all, people call that a Venom ripoff. Second of all, I never said I didn't like other stuff. Well, Jamie, so, Jamie, Jamie worships Venom and Motorhead. Venom right. makes Motorhead. But, but yeah, but Jamie and Midnight did not have an album called Left Hand Path and then put out a Death and Roll. They Fair started enough. off. You got me. You That's got where me. they started. You got it's me. one thing. It's like, for example, if the, uh, the Almighty Tish, the heaviest goddamn man, we can't make a video without the goddamn Tish. If, he, if, if Big Willie goes in there and he starts singing like Macho Man, he's like, yeah, we got a fucking Covenant album. I'd be like, this is gay as fuck, dude. What are you talking <laughs> about? I want to I hear, you know, heavy fucking dark shit with those silly movie symbols. I was like, that's what I want to hear. Yeah. Like, that's what I expect yeah. from that band. So it's a little little uh, unfair comparison. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You know. But yeah. I mean, I like a bit of death and roll. <laughs> You no, know. no, so do I. Yeah. Uh, even that band, uh, I mean, I own a couple things. It's been years since I listened to them. Even that band, Black Breath, I'm like, yeah, a couple yeah, hours being yeah. good. Um, I mean, if, if I put it if I put it on the player now, it'd be a new listen, but I remember them being good. Yeah. Uh, no, of course, I like some of that stuff, too. It's just, you know, when you're going from Rika Putrefaction to Swan Song, you're like, it's a bit of a shell shock. You're like, like what is, like, like wow. wow. That, I mean, like, well, that's a leap, but if you went along the whole path. Here's, yeah, yeah. here's another one for you back in the day. Lee Dorian, Napalm Death, World's Fastest Band. He quits the band, it's getting too big, it's getting too commercial. They're charging more than one pound fifty a gig, God forbid. <laughs> oh, no, dude, he, he apologized What's years later. What's one pound fifty? Yeah, was that, like two dollars uh, in USD? Yeah, it was like two dollars uh, back in the day or whatever. Because yeah. that's kind of like, you're cashing in on... on yeah, you're the sellout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he does, uh, he does Cathedral, which he went from the world's fastest band to the world's slowest band. I don't like dude. Cathedral either though. No, but check this out. First record, this is before the internet, Every press release was, this is doom. This is not grindcore, this is doom. This is, we got hate mail. What the fuck, I expected a new yeah. fucking- <laughs> So we na told you. Napalm death. Yeah. Well, people are stupid as fuck, yeah. dude. Dude, if you want to see dumbest fucking human beings in the world, just read my goddamn comment section. Some of the shit, I'm like, did you even watch the video? Yeah. Like, I was like, you literally, they like- looked at the thumbnail and started- Yeah, the I, was like, I was like, you, I think you don't even make sense. Like, you're, you're almost, some of them are so goddamn dumb. It's like, you're literally 
clarifying what I said. Like you didn't even listen. Like you couldn't have possibly listened. And if you did, you were on meth and with earplugs in. And, and, there's no possible way you can be saying end something of the day, though, as End of the day, it feeds the algorithm. It does, and that's why I don't yeah. delete shit. You, you, and some people accuse me, you're deleting my comments. I was like, dude, I don't know how to delete the comments. I don't well, even have a YouTube fucking profile yeah. picture. Yeah. What the fuck do you mean I'm deleting your comments? I ain't deleting shit. But yeah, YouTube just sees that as everyone's interacting. Let's put it out to more yeah. people. They're, they're actually doing promo for you by yeah, doing yeah. that. You know? Oh, don't be wrong. You'll get plenty of rip-ons too. Doesn't matter who's oh, yeah. on, somebody gets yeah, ripped yeah, on. No, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it is. But you know, there's that meme of two kids in the backyard fighting and one's knocking the other one out. And he goes, little Jimmy forgets that in real life, you can't talk shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, back in the day before YouTube and all that, uh, Blabbermouth was a big one. And they would do a press release Dear size in the studio, new album. That would be like 200 comments like, Die Glenn Benton, you fat fuck. <laughs> uh, you said you'd kill yourself at 33. Dude, I'm so sick of hearing him. He really, it, it, people say I stick up for Glenn so much. I was like, part of it is because I feel like he's, I almost relate to him in a sense because when they bring he's, up the 32, I was like, he's explained it like 17 fucking yeah, times, but, but, dude. He's, but, he was at a bar drunk and he said it sarcastically and people, and he just so happened to be somebody recorded it or wrote it down. I'm yeah. like, I was like, oh, granted, what you said, said it was a dummy line, as childish, whatever. Okay, you can make that argument. But I was like, he clarified why he said it. How many different explanations do you need? But I mean, it's just let's But the thing is, a press release like that, Blabbermouth would be. I mean, those would text each other like, like, did you see what they said about you? Or, Why do you read what they said about you? Like, like they would laugh about the comments. So we'd do like Usurper from Chicago, brilliant band. Mm -hmm. uh, Usurper in the studio, great band. Love these guys. Two comments. Biggest selling record of the year, Deicide. Smallest selling record of the year, Usurper. <laughs> and um, uh, I took, uh, when, when they would come to New York, Deicide come to New York, I'd take Glenn to lunch. We're heading back to the club, the venue, whatever. He's like, doo, doo, doo. and he's nudging me, he goes, you know damn well, these are the same guys talking shit about me, oh, but they up. see him in person. Like, oh, you know, like that. So you have Glenn's phone number? Yeah. yeah. Well, shit, you got to tell him about my guy yeah. in interview. Oh, oh, yeah. up, man. I have like five people trying to hit him up. They can't yeah. get a hold of him. Yeah. But yeah, you want to hear something funny? I'll tell them something I just found yeah. about yesterday. Yeah. So it's a shout out to goddamn Killer Opposers podcast. Came on your goddamn podcast, Seth. I guess from what I told, it was fucking da uh, David. Was his name last night? David from Fluids. He got Glenn Benton on his uh, podcast, which is much small. Not that I'm, yeah, big, not yeah. that I'm fucking big shit whatsoever, because I'm not. But like, you know, he's a smaller podcast, even smaller than me. And he got he got Glenn Benton on it, and he's like, and David asked him for fluids. How'd you get Glenn Benton? Well, you know, because Glenn kind of knows J Dog. I'm like, he does. <laughs> News to fucking me. I was like, I've been trying to get him an interview forever. I'll hook it up. Dude. I was I'll like, uh, up. I was like, but, but but what's weird about Seth? I'm like, why the fuck did you email me, dude? I was like, I came, I came on your podcast. On, you order from us all the time. I was like, you know, I was like, I know you watch my shit. Why the fuck wouldn't you email me? Like, hey, dude, I got Glenn. By the way, here's his contact. Because why going to Milwaukee Belfast? Yeah, 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 yeah. The main reason I'm going to Milwaukee is to get the goddamn interview. So and I'm but trying to score that as we so, speak, so but I haven't got an official thing. So you, are you are you booking for that? We're uh, we're uh, Jamie's we're festival. Vending. Yeah, Jamie, we're we're okay, vending, right. and then Jay, like Jamie Josta asked him for me, but he hasn't got to say he even sent me the text. So yeah. I sent this All to right. his uh, X Y and Z management. I contacted his. I don't even know what the fuck they are. His management set up a uh, shout out to Marie and uh, uh, all the other chicks that are on his goddamn throat. I forget your names. Um, but they're Where currently they? as of, like when I say currently, I mean as of like yesterday or today. Uh, try like oh you know, for this and try to get this set up. But I don't have an official answer. The more ears, yeah. Thing, no, I'll, like, I'll, I'll reach out to more. I get, I'll go home. So yeah. Send him our, our fucking yeah. video. I'm like, hey, yeah, cool. this homeboy cool. fucking out. And, and and this guy isn't talking shit about him. Yeah, <laughs> so, he loves him. All I do. As a matter of fact, I've got so many people like, yeah. Jesus, fuck, okay. dude, did you yeah, actually yeah, blow yeah. Glenn or something? Like <laughs> you do so much sticking up for him, it's insane. Which now, actually, speaking of that, I got because, a lot. I got a lot of time for Glenn. We, uh, they were the first band ever to fulfill their contract with Roadrunner. Roadrunner in the '90s were like eight album deal. You well, what I heard is they pumped out the last two because they didn't like them. I actually like those two that nobody does. But, Incinerate but, them and Torment the Hell. But they, the budgets went ding, 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 to, to nothing, to nothing. Yeah. But uh, I mean, because end of the day though, Roadrunner's goalpost moved from that to that in the time the eight in the time of the eight albums. But uh, they were the first band ever. To what was it for? You mean six albums? Because they no. only six. They did six studio albums with them and a live album. Yeah. I know, it's all you said Superfan, man. I'm pretty sure it's eight albums, but uh, but sure it was like I'm pretty sure it's six plus one. It's a, a record deal, publishing deal, merchandise deal. Yeah. First band to ever fulfill the deal with Roadrunner. Uh, we went down there, hung out with them. I'm actually his ex-wife. 
She's like, Al's coming to town. You, you're banned. You, you're banned from hanging out with Al. So I'm the bad influence in him. On Club Yeah. How the fuck are yeah. you the bad influence on Glass? I don't know. Did you blow him or something too? No. Just <laughs> may, maybe we, we maybe went too many drinks or whatever. I don't oh, know. But okay. anyway. But uh, yeah, in five five years we did three albums, two DVDs. I spoke to him every day for five years. Great guy, best guy. Did you uh, when Scars of the Crucifix came out? I remember. Do you remember when that album was coming out? It was advertised as like Glenn's doing the layered vocals, like Legion. Yeah. This was literally shit that yeah. like, the hype. You guys did seven different vinyl colors. Yep. Um, did that go over very well? I guess the yeah. album. Yeah. Yeah. Was that like holy shit? The size back because a lot of people didn't like and no, but uh, uh, I liked them, but I saw why people did. Hey, I, was like, okay, I get it. Check it out. Uh, so flew down to Florida, partied with them. Uh, they play in the House of Blues. It's no longer there on uh, Sunset, and uh, every show they're playing, they were sold out. House of Blues are like, you did more liquor sales than any other band this year. Here's a cash bonus check for you, whatever. They were so happy with the side. Uh, I sign them, I go down to see how to distribute it. Yeah, we just got Deicide, like, this is a band on the decline. You'll sell 2,000 albums. Like, no, you don't understand. Every venue's selling out. It's going to go mega. Take more, take more. And, you know, we ended up doing like 80,000, whatever it was. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, they like, they just look at the numbers. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No clue. I think the reason they thought that is because, honestly, yeah, like I said, I remember when Cinderay, and Torment, the Hulk came out. People, yeah, people, oh, dude, these guys suck. They're just cash. They're like... So I think that what they were going off. But I'm consensus. pretty sure their budgets are like, here's two bucks, go make an album yeah. for us. Whatever the reason, again, I liked those records. Yeah, I was like, yeah. but but that was the general. I'm just telling what the scene was. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, wasn't yeah, my no, word. I was, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, I was like, I was like, yeah, they good as Serpents of Light. I was like, no, I was like, but I was like, I, I, was like, I still like them. Yeah. I was like, Bible Bash is a great song, you know, Forever Hate You. I was like, it's got good shit. Yep. yep. Um, but everybody was like, dude, these fucking albums blow. <laughs> and um, the only, actually, to be honest with you, and I've said on my channel, I think the DSI's worst album, but I, I like everything. Yeah. But their worst album, in my opinion, is actually one era I did. I thought it was um, Till, uh, Till Death Do Us yeah. Part. But do you know the story oh. Story with that is he was going for a terrible divorce. I mean, all the songs about his ex-wife. Uh, That's the one who banned him from hanging oh, out well, with Oh, well, there you yeah. go. But uh, it was literally like, I've got studio time booked. i got to go to the you know, Florida... Florida law is different from most of the country, whatever, as we know. But uh, he was like, just driven to hell by this woman, in and out of court. There was things, I had to sign some stuff like, he's no longer doing DSI, he's sitting, he's just sitting at home, he doesn't have any income, mm. because she was like, you've got millions, hand it over, or whatever yeah. sort of thing. Uh, so he was in a bad headspace. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it was an idea. Yeah, but so I mean, it, it, if I was to ask him, which I plan on asking him, uh, if you, like, does he consider that his worst record? Wouldn't or you know. don't know? Wouldn't know. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. Because, yeah, because uh, yeah, um, Stench of Redemption, I do like it. The yeah. only thing I've done, uh, Stench of Redemption, I thought the song Desecration, I thought was boring. I just thought, I was like, oh, that's a boring song. But other than that, I liked every song. Yep, yep. You know, um, but that, that was kind of a hit, too. A lot of people, I mean, songs like Homage for Satan. Yeah. I mean, so did that record do very well for you, Rick? Did great. Yeah. Okay, did that's great, what man. I assumed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why do you know, I mean, maybe you're not allowed to say, too, but why did DSI eventually leave? Uh... Right. It was only a free album deal, but we okay. did do two DVDs. I mean, back when people bought DVDs, we did we did five pieces of product in eight years, whatever. Uh, and they were done with us. And it's like, we're going to offer you this for more. And Century Media is like, yeah, you awesome. know. Yeah, you got to go with the money, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is what it is. No, so hard, there was no, no hard feelings? No, no hard, of course not. So, uh, uh, what's the guy's owner name, Peaceville? What's the name? Digsby? Dirtby? Earache is Digby. Yeah. Hammy is Peaceville. Century Media was Robert and Oliver. Okay. Yeah, all these guys are about but, it. So, but, so Digby didn't care. I mean, he loved he loved Glenn, but uh, it is what it is. You know, you gotta understand. It becomes it's a bit. It's not a it's not a personal decision. It's That's the way I look at it too. Yeah. No, I do the same. Hundred percent. Just like that. I mean, there's people like I remember when Midnight left uh, Hell's Headbangers for uh, Metal Blade. People have asked me. I was like, I was like, I can't speak for my brothers. I was like, I was like, I was like, I wasn't happy. I was a little bummed, but I was like, you know, I understood from his point. I was like, I get it. Yeah. I was like, I was happy for him. I was like, we're still friends to this day. I was like, yeah, exactly. I hang out with them regularly. Yeah, exactly. I was like, no, I was like, I, I, was, I didn't look at it like that. I was yeah. like, because I separate business and person. Yeah. I was like, I get that. So I was like, but I was like, I can't speak for my brothers. Yeah. I was like, a lot of these questions when people ask when it's business related, I was like, I can only give you my take. Yeah. There's three of us. You want to know everybody's? Ask them individually. I, I mean, like, I can't speak. For I'm them. sure my personal opinions are different from yeah. the other 15 staff at Erie. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And you probably don't ask them, just like I don't ask my brothers. Yeah. People are like, what does 
you know, what a sea dog, think of this, and easy, think of this. Like, I did, honestly, I never even asked. Yeah, yeah. I was like, if you want to know, go fucking ask him. Exactly. I, like, I have no idea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so I was like, you guys just think we sit there and talk about the catalog all day. I was like, we, but, we, but we don't. We, we were talking earlier on before this came on about uh, Norwegian black metal and the Mayhems and the Burzums and the Emperors. You're a Burzum fan. Uh, yeah, I'm a Burzum fan. But, uh, well, sign Burzum, right? Uh, what? You almost signed Burzum. You almost, yeah. I mean, everyone knows that. that. We're, everyone I don't know that story. Well, but, I can't uh, no, but, uh, loop on everything. So. We flew uh, the Emperor Boys uh, outside of Ishan to Nottingham. Ishan didn't come? Uh, no. Uh, you know what? 25 years later, we hung out in Vegas. I'm like, dude, I got to know. I got to know. And he's like, Samoff never fucking invited me. Like, well, they don't like each other? Uh, no, he, he explained it. I'm the music guy. He's the business guy. Oh, okay, but he, no, he, no, bought, no. he bought Short and I forget the drummer's name, but he bought them over. But he's like, hey, hey, don't tell him, don't tell him. <laughs> but, but I was like, what happened? Like, I, I never knew. And I called him at Vegas and we're like, dude, you got to tell, I got to, 25 years later, I got to know. But uh, the whole time uh, that they were in Nottingham, Sam Off and Digby, all they talked about was techno. I believe it. I remember so, all these posers. No, but it's like uh, <laughs> every, every um, American, like, Norway, black metal. Oh, I, I, dude, I call these guys all the time because I, I bust balls. So don't be wrong. Shout off if you want to do an interview. Let's fucking do it. You yeah. never do an interview with my ass. And Sean, too, you're invited. Don't worry. We can invite you both. Yeah. But I've talked about, like, somebody asked me about Necro Butcher for Mayhem. And I'm like, let's call it like it is, dude. Again, Necro Butcher, you're invited, too. Come on, let's get that goddamn interview. I'm like, dude. Let's call it like it is, man. How much metal do you think those guys are still listening to? I was like, at best, they're listening to classic rock, maybe yeah, throwing yeah. out Welcome to Hell once yeah. in a blue moon. Some, some 80s. I, was like, I was like, that's not me talking shit. That's no, not no, me putting no, them no. down. It that's not saying me I don't like. Yep, I was like, yep. that's just the truth. But yeah, exactly. But the kiddos, Norway, black metal, fucking only Cavalt is real. I was like, no, dude. But get, the, get, get the fuck but, out but of here. But that's even, not what's going even on. in like 92, they were all going to the techno clubs to meet girls because they weren't meeting them at the metal bars or I whatever. Bet they weren't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, all, all the Dimu guys, Shagraf and all that, they're all hitting the, the, the techno clubs up. I believe but, it. But kids in the Midwest, in America, like, no, 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 no. I know, it's not that. I know, 100%. No way, you know. Yeah, no way. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, there's some Cabal black metal bands that I know personally, and I won't say because I don't think they want to be thrown on the bus, which you'd be absolutely, sh not you, but them, they'd be absolutely shocked by some of the stuff that they listen to on the side, and I know because they told me point blank yep. personally. Point, I'm talking about the Cavalt of the Cavalt. I'm not talking about Dark Funeral that you guys all rip on me for like it. <laughs> I'm talking about your true Cavalt. Only Raw is real, bro. Yep. Them. Yes, listen to bands such as Limp Bizkit and shit. Literally, Limp Bizkit told to my face, your guys' favorite Cavalt of Cavalt. Have you seen As uh, evil as it gets. Yes, well, that's what they listen okay, to. All right. Okay. Look at, look at Mayhem and Dissection. What guitars do they all play? Even Watain, perhaps. Oh, I, who are you referring they, to? They all play Les Pauls, right? Why do they all play Les Pauls? I don't know. Because Kiss was big in the 70s and they all worshipped Ace Frehley. Oh, I knew that. But yeah. they're, to their defense, they're older guys. That makes sense. Yeah, but yeah. but that's but it's all from Kiss. Yeah. And uh, I think even Paul Stanley said, no, Gene Simmons hates uh, I Was Made For Loving You, the disco song, but they play all these Norwegian festivals Every grim and frostbitten, <laughs> grim, grim frostbitten legions, abnormal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every one of them's like, I bet. Boogie, boogie. No, it's, they've they've said it. It's, it's for real. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so serious. Like, oh, I was made for loving you, on. Like, get, get my disco on, you know? Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Whatever. I mean, look at uh, Satanic Warmaster. If you follow his Instagram. It's all goofy video games. I wasn't music. saying names, man. Yeah, I just threw him <laughs> under the bus. But that, he likes what he likes. Yeah. He likes what he likes, you know. Hey, you said it, not me. <laughs> right, he, you blame me. Blame me. It's my fault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all him, dude. It's Al Bundy's fault. Yeah, Al Bundy. Al Bundy. Got, Eric Al. That's what we call him yeah, over here. Yeah. That's Al why he's in the goddamn phone. That's how you are. Yeah, phone. yeah, yeah. Eric Al. <laughs> everybody, everybody calls me Eric Al. That's fine. Really? But yeah. Oh, fuck. Goddamn, I'm late to the game. I thought I, I was like original Al as fuck. Then. Al Bundy's good. Yeah, Al Bundy's even better. The, uh, um... Uh, there used to be a metal show called Uranium, and the chick that on that Julia, uh, she she's kind of loud and annoying like Peggy Bundy, and I guess she figured it out. She go, ow, and she 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 would always Peggy Bundy me like terrible, it. terrible. Yeah. So give and, me uh. Just some fucking questions. uh Jason Quinlan. Is that how you pronounce his name? Jason Quinlan. Quinlan. I think. Quinlan. Yeah. yeah. He said that yeah you got the ultimate stories and actually yeah you you have scheduled a lot of stories. Give me a story of a band. To, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a goddamn uh, a, a, a training day on you. One of my favorite movies. 
with Denzel Washington. Yeah, great film. Tell me a story. What do you mean a story? A story. Tell me a story, but you're going to tell me a true story of something that happened with an earache shows bands that is a good story of bands we know that is like, it doesn't even have to be something super eventful that stuck out in your mind. Like I've told little stories of like shows that were eventful to me, whether it have been the first time I saw Exhumed or Impaled. By the way, Impaled was like 10 people. Yeah. But it was super eventful to me because I told the reasons why. It doesn't got to be life changing, but to you, was super eventful, sticks out in your mind for whatever reason. Tell me a goddamn story. I have a hundred of them. I'm sure you I, do. I, I, so I, do I. I, but I want to pick one. Off the top of my head, uh, we were friends with Julie from Cacophonous. They put out the first demo records, the first Cradle records, all that, like ground zero for, for black metal in the UK. Um, we loved the first demo record. We played all the time in the office. We happened to be in Germany at trade show or some shit. And someone's like, hey, demo's playing down the street. So we've been out at bars, we're drinking, uh, go to show. I can't believe we're going to finally get to see demo live and all this sort of thing. And um, somewhere throughout the night, we ran out of money for beer. And uh, there's like two huge German bouncers. But we're the record label, let us in. And the, oh, record label, not what record label? Like, <laughs> just like they're speaking English and they seem to know what they're doing. In you go, sir. So Dimu just get off stage. Well, excuse me. And we just go to their fridge and just start cracking all their beers. I apologize to Selenos. 20 years later. Stay his beers. Yeah, I bought him beer. I bought him beers. But they just they just got off stage like, what do we do? Like, why are these strangers taking our beer or whatever? Like, we're like, yeah, anyway, yeah, let's like, drink their beers. Um, Walked in like you own the place. Yeah, no, for real. So years later, I said, dude, first time I ever saw you guys with this show in Germany, he goes, that was our first show. So like, yeah, that was your first European show. It's like, no, that was the first show. They oh, never, first show ever. They never played oh. live before. Oh, wow. You, you were there. Yeah, but they, they obviously like... So you were at the very first Demi Border show ever. Yeah, and oh, uh, wow. okay. that was their rider. They didn't know that was beer for them. They're just like, what, like, we're off stage. What do we do? Like, so stiff and wooden. Because kids ain't ever playing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Either, yeah. But I thought they'd been ripping up Norway for like years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I, I, I honestly didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well it's kind of like actually uh, fucking like uh, he said the best, and I didn't know this, but he worded it better than anything I could say because I thought this for local bands. Shout out to Cleveland local bands, Decrepit, From the Depths, and Balmer, Regurgitation. I thought this as a kid. I wasn't as retarded to think like they're as big as Cannibal Corpse, but I thought they were somebody's, right? And it was fucking... Uh, Phil yesterday from Sacred Reich, you know, he said he was hanging out backstage with somebody, forget who he said it was, they're like, dude, we're hanging out with a big band. Oh yeah, who are you hanging out with? We're hanging out with Sacred Reich. He's like, big band, what are you talking about? He's like, his fan is for Fanatical. Right. I always say on yeah. this channel too, yeah. shout out to Keith from Goddamn Rotting. He put that in my comments too. Fan is for Fanatical. F you dipshits are not Fanaticals. You're casual fucking listeners. If you don't buy the goddamn record, you are not a fan slash Fanatical. You are a casual fucking listener. Nothing wrong with it. Doesn't need to be. Doesn't mean you need to be beat up. Doesn't need to be dragged from a pickup truck. Doesn't mean any of that. Just means you're not a goddamn Fanatical. So shut your bitch ass up. So having said that, with Sacred Reich, he was saying that too. People think like when you're a fanatical of the band, yeah. which I was, you think they're bigger than they actually yep. are. Yep. You were doing the same. I did that so much as a kid. Yeah, decrepit. Surely people care about them. You go outside of Cleveland. Who? Yep. You know what I mean? And that's the way it is. And I'm like, but, I understand but, that but, now. But, but even, at the time, even Kerrang! magazine back in the day, there was dudes on the cover who was who were collecting unemployment. Yeah, you know, people like, oh, you're on the cover of Kerrang! You must be a multi-millionaire. Yeah, multi 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 <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know? That's why, and I try to explain to people that are, and I meet them all, and it's it's flattering and it's awesome, and I love when you guys come up to me in photos. But they come up to me, dude. There's people I met at shows. I'm not even yanking your chain, dude. You would have think that they're meeting Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm like, dude, chill the fuck out. I'm just like you. I'm a regular dude. You know, you're, I'm not a millionaire. I'm just a regular dude that likes metal like you. Yep. I just so happen to hit record, stop, upload on YouTube. Yeah. That's it. And but they don't know because they they like it and yeah, they fall yeah. and I get it. They so they think it's like. Oh my God, like I'm meeting Donald Trump. It's like, no, you're actually not. You're meeting just a regular Joe. You know what I mean? So I get that now because, but myself, I did the same time the first time I met someone like Exum. Yeah. And Matt Harvey is always probably like, the fuck, dude? I'm going back to Burger King next week after I'll tour. <laughs> and, you know, but you don't think of it like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I get it. I was there too. But uh, <laughs> for you, Damien, first show ever. <laughs> and yeah, they're just kids like, Mom, what do I do? They, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. the older guy stole my beer. <laughs> <laughs> the old man fucking a, a Eric Al stole my beer. Pushed their way in yeah. and took out You beers. may as well stuff them in a garbage can yeah. like in high school yeah. and stole his beer. Swirly them, right? 
Pretty much, man. But yeah. we didn't know. We didn't yeah. know. The yeah. nerdy black, the tough yeah. guy, black metal yeah. guys. Eric L. That's gonna be the goddamn title. Is there. Eric L. Swirly's Swirly's Demi Burger <laughs> stuffs them in a garbage can and steals their beer. That's the title of the video. Yeah. All that's right. Totally do that. Title. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm up for that. I'm yeah. up for that. Hell yeah. yeah. But it's got to be two parts. It's a it, well, you two parts are our friend, the man. Fucking put pieces together. We'll see you, goddamn it. So anything you want to add, goddamn Eric L. Because goddamn, you got a longy, especially with this two parter. All right. I'm old, I'm jaded, uh, I can get free music from er any label in the world, call them up, Al, send me music. Mr. Big Shot. This guy, his fucking company is the only people I get my money out and order. Because hey, that ain't my fault, I didn't know who the artist was. They, <laughs> they do, they do, it, they do it right. And even <laughs> stuff like this, to me, we are talking earlier on, but this is like, when I was a kid growing up, you go to the record shop, like, ow, we got two copies of this in, we, we know you want it, so we save one for you. That no longer exists, well, it kind of exists, but not as much as it does. What they do here with the videos and the newsletters and everything else is as close as building that metal community as you're gonna get in America in 2024. So support these guys. I love it. So I appreciate that, man. And without that, we're out of here, goddammit. Later.